we are right now. Let's bring in Samantha Joe Roth. She's a congressional reporter for The Washington Examiner. Uh, Samantha Joe, thank you very much for being with us this morning. Um, I want to focus in on these threats, because it does seem like this is part of what is backfiring on Jim Jordan. Now, this 22 number was a little lower than some people expected. Some people expected as many as 25 Republicans or so to vote against him on the floor. Um, But it still underscores that his path forward is bleak. And frankly, the people he's trying to pressure to move feel like they're being intimidated, they're being harassed, and it's not making them inclined Uh, to feel warm and fuzzy enough about Jim Jordan to try to rescue him. Yeah, absolutely. That is what I'm hearing as well. Uh, Representative Don Pekin yesterday talking a little bit about how his wife was receiving some of those text messages and threats. And this really only emphasizes some of their points. A lot of these folks say this intimidation really does not work against them. They are very, very against Jordan's bid for speaker. And any of these intimidation tactics are not going to work. Um, So it absolutely is backfiring as we are seeing. And even some of these folks are saying if there is a third vote, as we believe there's going to be, there's going to be even less uh, Republicans who are supporting Jim Jordan today. So that all remains to be seen. It does. And just to kind of give people a sense of what we think the plan is right now, the House is supposed to come back at noon today. Um, We expect, but we don't know, that there will be a third vote uh, for Jim Jordan on the floor. But there's increasing chatter about the possibility in the event that, say, a third vote goes forward, it fails, it would be expected to fail, about what to do if that happens, uh, because there is increasing frustration with the fact that they cannot do anything. They want to get an aid package to Israel out the door. Most people, there's opposition among hardline Republicans, but most members want to get aid to Ukraine out the door as well. They want to keep the government open. That might involve empowering uh, the speaker, the temporary speaker, Patrick McHenry. Um, what's your reporting about where those conversations stand, what Democrats might do in the event that that happens, and how that would play out inside the Republican conference? Yeah, so right now those discussions are underway. We know that they were happening last night. And I think they will go on. Uh, Jeffries has not said whether or not he's going to, you know, help some of these Republicans empower Patrick McHenry. Um, And obviously, Democrats are going to be needed in order to be able to do this. So those are discussions that are underway. Some of Jim Jordan's supporters, they don't want to see this. Um, You know, they think it's a distraction. Another big question is whether Patrick McHenry will even, you know, want to do this. Um, You know, he has been reluctant to even want to be speaker. And, you know, a lot of folks are wondering what exactly he's going to do on this. But this is a really credible question. And moving forward, as you mentioned, so many things are happening. They need to happen. November 17th is a critical spending deadline. And as long as this happens, nothing can happen with that spending. Um, You know, the Senate is paralyzed as well. So it really needs to something needs to happen. And whether or not Patrick McHenry is emboldened with more power really remains to be seen. But it is something that Republicans are talking about. Right. No. And um, I mean, look, he's a man with a young family uh, who has to deal with all the various personalities um, if he's going to be thrust into this role that, frankly, nobody has really had much success in recent years dealing with. Um, There are reasons why he doesn't want the job that are very easy to understand, but he has started leaving the door a little bit more open to this possibility than he was about a week ago. Samantha Joe Roth of The Washington Examiner, thank you very much for being with us this morning. I appreciate it. Thank you.